Do you know that feeling when you've not actually been taught to do something and all of a sudden you're expected to know how to do it perfectly? That's what prescribing is like for doctors. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah, I'm a junior doctor working near London and this video is going to be about prescribing. This is something that I know puts the fear in the hearts of medical students and junior doctors because, to be honest, we're not actually taught this properly in medical school. And when you start working as a junior doctor, prescribing is going to be a big part of your day-to-day -day job. I could not find a single video going through real practical examples of how to write and prescribe common medications that you're asked to do every day in the hospital. So that's what I'm doing in this video. This is what I wish I had before I started working as a junior doctor. I'm not going to give you the pharmacological explanation behind each medication and why it's given, but I'm going to go through very common medications that you need to know how to prescribe and how to actually write them down on a drug chart because it's one thing knowing that you can have one gram of paracetamol four times a day and another to know how to write it properly and to get comfortable with it. I split this video into three sections. In the first part we'll quickly go through the layout of a drug chart and the different sections where you would prescribe different medications. In the second part I'm going to show you how to actually write and prescribe lots of common medications. We're going to cover antiemetics, laxatives, analgesia and VTE. If you'd like me to cover more medications like PR and insulin, fluids, replacing electrolytes and sedation, let me know in the comments down below and I will happily make it for you. Stick around to the end of the video because the last part is going to be all about very common mistakes that doctors make when prescribing and it's things that you really want to avoid. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I hope the setup is clear enough. I've got a standard drug chart in front of me and we're going to fill it in step by step just so you know exactly what you need to do. Um, so obviously this section is going to be the patient details and you're just going to fill this in. So another patient. You always want to make sure that you put in the hospital number. So you'll have that here as well as the NHS number if you have it. The date of birth. Whenever that patient was born. Um, this part is less important, but it is helpful to know which uh, number chart it is because if there's multiple drug charts, if a patient's had a long admission, you want to know which one it is, so fill that in. And the date of admission, so we'll just say this date, um, whichever consultant they're under, which ward they're on, so we'll just put 14B, wherever that is. Um, and the date that you started the drug chart. I don't know why I'm picking these dates, but there we are. So that's the first section filled in. This is gonna be filled in by the nurses. So if you know the weights, you make sure you put it on there because um, for some medication, it's gonna be based on weight. Um, then this section, very important. So the patient allergies, you want to make sure that you're always checking this and make sure that it's been filled in. We'll come back to this later. This section is for the pharmacist and this is where they document in a green pen if there's anything that needs reviewing or adding to the drug charts. So that's the first section done. If you turn the page, you will see on this side there's uh, some guidelines on VTE and we're going to come back to this later. And on this side, you do the risk assessment for VT. This section is for once only medication. So essentially that means if there's a medication that you want to prescribe and give to the patient only once, or you can use this if you want to give a stat dose immediately. So if there's a poorly patient, you can give a stat dose of antibiotics here. These two sections you can ignore and it's more for nursing staff to document. Now we get to the PRN or when required section. So this is any medication that's prescribed for the patient but that they don't take regularly. So on here you can have things like laxatives, antiemetics, and if the patient feels nauseous or starts to get constipated, then you can always use the medications that are prescribed here. So you then have a whole section for insulin, which we will eventually go over. This part of the drug chart, as you can see, is for antibiotics. So this is where they'll be prescribed. And this is in particular for gentamicin because gentamicin is prescribed based on dose levels, which are measured seven to 14 hours after the first dose is prescribed. And so you use a calculator and it's done in a specific way. So that's why it's a different section. Now we get to the regular part of the drug chart. So you've got all the regular medications that the patient takes. And finally, you've got the back section where you prescribe fluids and infusions. Okay, so I've just jumped to the regular section to show you how to prescribe laxatives. So one of the common ones you'll be prescribing is Senna, so that's a stimulant laxative, and you can give either 7.5 milligrams or 15 milligrams. So I'm gonna put 15 milligrams 
The root is going to be oral, so PO. And here you want to put the starting date, so let's say the 13th of June. And the time, this is usually given in the evening, so you're going to put 22, so that's 10 p.m. Um, and the start date, which is the 13th of the 6th, you don't really need to do this unless you're going to review in a while. Nothing here. And new, you want to put, because it's new medication, your GMC number and your signature. And there we are. Another common laxative is lactulose. Now this is a osmotic laxative and the common dose is going to be 15 milliliters and this is typically given twice a day so 8 and 8 because you want to make sure it's given roughly even throughout the day. Um, again here you would fill in the same as above, do your signature, put the starting dates, new. Just to give you another osmotic laxative that's commonly prescribed you've got Movicol and the dose is typically one sachet so the way you write a sachet is like this. Um, and you can give it up to three times a day, so either once a day, BD, or three times a day. So if it's three times a day, you would do 8, 16, and 22, so you even it out throughout the day. Start date, GMT number, signature, new, oral. I forgot the oral there. So these are the common laxatives that you'll be prescribing. Just so you know, if you write these in the PRN section, it's going to be exactly the same. I'll show you one of them as the drug, the dose 15 milligrams, root PO, and then here you put once a day. So the only thing that changes is whereas in the regular you'll put the time and the dates, here you just put how frequently you would give it. Again, GMC number and signature and start dates and new. Two more common laxatives that you will have to prescribe are glycerol suppositories. So this is when the patient is quite constipated and the regular laxatives aren't helping. And this just goes in the PRN section. So the dose would be four grams, and this is always the same. PR, so rectal dose, um, and frequency you just put PRN. Put the date, new, GMC number, and signature, okay? And the next one is going to be phosphate enema. You can look all these up because I want to make this video as practical as possible and not go through the explanation of each medication. Um, but I think it's important to know how to prescribe them and then you can look at the differences online. So again, this is how you write a one dose, rectal and frequency is going to be again PRN. Put the dates. See, it's quite repetitive, but you always need to fill those sections in. So those are all the common laxatives that you'll have to prescribe. Next, moving on to antiemetics. So this is when a patient is feeling nauseous or has vomited. You want to make sure that they have appropriate antiemetics prescribed. Now, typically I will prescribe them as PRN unless they are very nauseous and regularly vomiting, in which case you would put it in regular. So a very common antiemetic will be cyclozine. So this is an antihistamine actually. And the dose is 50 milligrams and you always put PO or IV because if the nurses are struggling giving oral, they can always give IV and they don't have to call you again to do that. And the frequency is TDS, so three times a day. If you're putting this in the regular section, you would put it as 8, 16, 24, okay? And this is a new drug, date, GMC number and sign, okay? I'm doing this, obviously put your proper GMC number, but that's how you prescribe it. Another common one is gonna be on Dancitron. To be honest, these are the two common uh, antiemetics that you will see prescribed all the time. So this is a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist. Um, look at the differences. Um, there are, in some cases, it's better to give certain antiemetics. I'm not gonna go over that now, but the dose of the on Dancitron is four milligrams. You can also give eight milligrams if you want. Um, and again, you do POIV, so oral or IV, um, and the frequency is the same as the cyclozine, so TDS. At one point, you will get so used to prescribing these that you'll be able to just write it off the top of your head. In the beginning, I think it's a good thing, um, if you're stressed about starting uh, work as a doctor, it's a good thing to just practice prescribing these, and they're easy to remember, they're both TDS, both oral and IV, just remember the actual doses. 